This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey yo, Sarah DT Rhymes with Peachy here. Two videos in one week. Who is she? Today we are talking about my network attached storage. So we're not at the studio today, but my Hizzle home. I've been rocking uh, my Synology NAS now for like seven or eight years. It's, it's kind of crazy. And it's done me well, but honestly, it's pretty slow. I've only really been using it as cold storage. So when I finish a project, it's been done for several months. I'll move it over to my Synology NAS. And if I ever need any footage from there or exports, anything, I will copy that clip from the NAS and then paste it onto the computer that I'm using in the project folder to keep everything locally on my computer. I enjoy video editing with most of my footage being on my computer, being on my internal SSD. They're just super fast, so no bottlenecks there. So I've never actively edited off of my NAS, and that's not what I want. I don't want to put all of my current projects on the NAS and edit everything off the NAS. But what I do want to do is when I have those clips that I want to grab from previous projects, I don't want to have to copy and paste them, duplicate the footage right on the computer that I'm working on. I just want to say, hey, here is this file on the NAS. And you know, when those clips are played on my resolve timeline for the 15 seconds or whatever, it can read it off of the NAS where that footage is and will always be. So today I'm doing a big upgrade. I'm keeping the same exact NAS setup, but I'm just adding a 10 gig card with a SSD cache. So that ethernet connection between my computer and my NAS is going to be that much faster, ideally 10 times faster, right? And that SSD cache obviously helps because those spinning disks in your NAS are not fast at all. But when you have that SSD cache, it can read or write that footage that you're currently using on on the SSD and then when it's done, it can offload it um, to your NAS. That's how you get the faster speeds. Currently, my NAS is reading and writing around 100 megabytes per second. That's pretty standard for uh, Synology NASes out there. So that is what we're up against. If you're curious what that looks like when you're just scrubbing through footage in Resolve off of your NAS, here it is. And a few Chrome tabs, it's just, it's a game over. Um, stacking effects when color grading in Resolve, it can get a little it's very sluggish. It's the worst. I don't, don't recommend it. upgrade is installed, uh, we need to switch out my switch. My current switch does have two 10 gig uh, connections, but I do need more of those now that I have super speedy internet. Since my computer is plugged in directly through the switch, I wanna be able to utilize those super fast ethernet speeds. But remember, when it comes to utilizing those 10 gig speeds, um, your internet, your Wi-Fi has nothing to do with it. As long as your NAS has a 10 gig ethernet connection that's connected to a 10 10 gig switch and then your computer has a 10 gig capability and that is plugged into the 10 gig switch and all those ethernet cables are at a minimum um, cat six cables you will be good that connection will be 10 gig i'm definitely not a beginner with this stuff but i'm definitely not an expert i know just enough to be dangerous uh, so i know probably the words that i'm saying are very confusing to half of you and then the other half are probably like you're saying it wrong uh, you know well it can't win them all Okay, time to set up the SSD cache. Now, I wasn't sure which one of these to select, so I just went with the default. And after testing out the speeds, I actually was um, a little disappointed. Remember, a 10 gig connection means the speeds should be closer to 1000 megabytes per second. Um, not what I was getting here. After doing a little bit of chat GPTing, I came to the conclusion that, hey, this is actually fine if it's a read-only cache. The most important use case for me is reading files, is scrubbing through video files in Resolve. 
12. After doing this, the read speeds did increase a little bit, but still not, I, I know it's never gonna be like 1000 megabytes per second. I was just hoping it would get a little bit closer to that. So it did increase a little bit. So I'm just gonna leave it on that setting. Remember, we started at 100 megabytes per second and now we are 600 megabytes per second. So we are still gonna get results that are six times better. So I'm gonna take that for now. If you guys have any ideas on what I should do, I'm gonna try to uh, maybe replace my ethernet cables. Maybe that is um, the bottleneck. I, I don't know. But the true test is heading into Resolve and pulling up just really any clip from my NAS and seeing if there is smooth 24 frames per second playback. All right, so I'm pulling directly from my NAS from 2019. This is some footage when we were living in New York City. Let's see the speed. Had to think a little bit there. Moment of truth. It's already updating quicker. Now let's press play. Amazing. It's not dropping any frames. See, this will do. Oh, I missed this apartment. <laughs> well, hey, I view that as a smashing success. Okay, this is not the end of the NAS adventures in this video. Um, we actually set up another NAS. I, I know that sounds crazy, but before we do that, a quick word from our sponsor, Squarespace. I love Squarespace. I have been really tweaking and getting my saradici.com Squarespace website to be chef's kiss Perfect. I use Squarespace's Fluid Engine, which allows you to really just drag and drop elements wherever you want on your website. You have such amazing flexibility and you can really tune it to your own personality. Whether you wanna display your creative portfolio or maybe you're a restaurant or event space, Squarespace really does have it all. Whether you're selling physical products or a digital product, you have a newsletter, SEO is really important for you. Squarespace has you covered. And a new feature that is really exciting is design intelligence. This is where you only have to type a little bit about what you want your website to be and AI does its magic. You get to pick some fonts and colors that you like and boom, you have a website in not hours and not minutes, but literally seconds. We are definitely living in the future. If you wanna check it out, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And if you're ready to get started today, you can go to squarespace.com slash Saradici. That is me for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Okay, back to the NAS. So I spent the entire night offloading one four terabyte SSD onto my NAS, getting that really organized. I like how my NAS is getting organized. It just, it makes sense. I have an export folder that is really easy to share with people who maybe, you know, want to do social content for me in the future. I have my YouTube videos all in one place. I have my photos with Synology photos. It just makes sense, but it really takes some administrative function to keep all of this organized. So it's my goal to do this as I go now so I'm not put into the place that I am now where I'm organizing like 10 terabytes of video photos and documents all from these random G drives that I had now onto my NAS. I mean, it truly is a mess. I'm like 20% done now. Uh, we're, we're making moves though. But what about that other NAS that I was mentioning? Y'all might judge me for this, but it's okay. It's okay. Okay, so we're at a point where the NAS is faster. It's not as fast as maybe I would like it, but we're moving on to the next step. And this is at the point where you might be like, uh, Sarah, this is a little overkill, don't you think? We are introducing a third NAS. Listen, one day I'll have the perfect house with a whole server room and everything will be perfect. But right now we're just kind of like piecing things together. I bought this almost a year ago. So I kind of forgot even what size the hard drives are that I bought. I'm sure they're, oh, 12, okay. So we got two 12 terabytes. The DS224 Plus. Now you might be saying, Sarah, what the heck? What are you doing? Look at those huge two NASs you have right there. I still have room in my expansion unit for expanding. Here is my thought process. Number one, I keep all of my current projects on the desktop of the computer I'm using. So right now that is my M4 Pro MacBook Pro. I do not have that backed up 
anywhere. Now, a person who has their life together could maybe just every night copy over the new files to an SSD manually. I, I would never do that, and that's honestly hard to keep up. I looked at doing it with G Drive, and it's totally doable, but you know, that's another monthly cost for four terabytes of storage. And then I started thinking, oh, you can just back it up to your current NAS, just use Synology Drive, which I totally could, but this is where my brain just started thinking. I was like, oh, well, what if my main NAS failed and I had to rebuild it from the backup? But that would take days to rebuild, and the stuff that I have on my computer is super valuable, so I would want it to be restored instantly. But my brain just started going down these scenarios, and I'm basically working with more freelancers now, so I actually want to open up most of my main NAS um, to remote editors that can pull old videos and make short form content, or just have that full library of content to flash back, you know, in main channel YouTube videos. I've always kept important documents like for tax or other stuff just locally on my computer's documents folder. And I was like, oh, well I should uh, move that to the NAS and just keep it synced. Oh, but I don't want that information on the same NAS that I'm sharing with the world, right? Just in case for privacy reasons. I've used Synology Quick Connect in the past. You have to kind of open up your whole NAS and then jerry rig the permissions in order to give uh, certain people permissions. I wish you can enable Quick Connect at a folder level. That would be really great, but you can't. So that opens up some security things as well. So I was like, okay, well, let's get a smaller NAS that I can keep all of my documents and then basically the backup of my computer now, but maybe in the future computers, cause I've had a desktop and a laptop in, in the past. I can also back up the small NAS to my bigger second NAS. Oh, there's so many NAS. So yeah, that's my thinking. I think it makes sense, but only time will tell in practice if it like actually makes sense. I can see the comments now. Sarah, just build your own server. At this point, I just understand Synology. And so it makes sense to my brain. It's the only solution that I like am actually gonna use because I'm used to using it, if that makes sense. Oh wait, I forgot to mention that this also helps me solve a Synology software problem by just adding some more hardware. I love Synology photos. You can organize all of your photos into folders like you normally would just like on your computer, but then it's just the software layer that displays all of those folders, but you see good thumbnails. They have a timeline view where they put all of your photos together, um, you know, with a timeline on the side. This is great, but you can't specify folders that you want to include or exclude if that makes sense sense. So if I wanted to say, Hey, I want to see all of my just like good photos. Let's exclude the iPhone photos, right? You can't do that. So when I'm using this beautiful Synology photos app to reminisce and look through all of my good pictures, I just have random screenshots from my iPhone in the midst. And it's kind of just the worst. So in addition to all the other stuff that I'm saying, I feel like I could put all of my iPhone photos on this hard drive, have it separate. And those are more personal too. You know, I have like personal information and screenshots potentially. And so that means all of my like good photos are on the main NAS and you can look at all of them via Synology photos, also oh, pretty. And then all of my iPhone photos were like 80% are terrible and only 20% are good. That just like literally physically lives in a different place. So I don't have to mix them in Synology photos. It's like I have two different Synology photos, but 100% it'd be better if Synology just fixed that in the software. I've requested that feature in the forum many, many times. Sometimes you gotta hang out with baby and edit, and this is what we're dealing with. Do you think the sound is a problem? All right, this is what's happening in the background. Anyways, I got the third NAS up and running. I basically have a Synology Drive application going to sync the documents, and then I'm doing the backup with my MacBook, so it's all working out great. So the bigger NAS is going to be uh, compatible <laughs> with Quick Connect, 
And so uh, multiple people will be able to log into that. I had a lot of people on Twitter say, hey, why not uh, do it via a VPN or tail sync, tail something, something with a tail. I'll look into those solutions, but it's nice to have the smaller NAS where it's not going to be accessible to external traffic. I'm not turning on Quick Connect. It's just gonna be a local thing um, for, you know, my documents, for my iPhone photos, the stuff that I wanna keep private. <laughs> Here at YouTube Life. Anyways, this was like a fun, quick video, a good challenge to see if I can make a video under 20 minutes. And hey, I did it. So thank you so much for just hanging out. Watch my last video um, where I talk about photo books and how I organize the 10,000 photos plus that I shoot every year. I'm actually really proud of that video. I like it. Check it out. Uh, check out my Squarespace link down in the description below. And until next time, everyone, stay peachy.